We might be capping off our journey with Silverline uh, for now in terms of Amber Lynn releases, but it's been a pleasure to entertain this particular EP, especially as I've said many times, as somebody who has such an existent relationship with Amber Lynn being a long-standing favorite on my playlist. Again, I think back to when I was a kid, when I first heard Ready Fuels, and ever since, I've been a long-time fan. The minute that I found out, you know, after their, whatever it was, hiatus or disbanding, again, I forget exactly what it was, but there was a long break period in between. The minute I found out new music was coming out through Two Graves, uh, much later after the track debuted, to be fair, but again, I was under the impression that Amber, new Amber Lynn music wasn't necessarily a thing, so it was quite a shocker when I found that out. And then, Similar to that, the EP. I, I thought maybe just one single, not five, but how could I not entertain a group like Amber Lynn, who I've said as well in the past, foundational Christian rock listen for me. I mean, I think back to get my early days of not only, you know, the Christian music scene of what I grew up on, really in genre focus, even though I've expanded a sense of many different types of groups all over, you know, the music landscape, not just, you know, in the Christian scene as well. It's many secularized. There are plenty of talents everywhere you look. But I think back to also rock influences. I'm a big metalhead today. Where did that emergence start? A couple other groups, to be fair, but Amber Lim is one of the foundational presences. I truly believe that. Again, like I said, Ready Fuels. How could you not watch that as a kid and not be engrossed? Several times, immediately. And of course, I've heard plenty of Amberlynn songs since. Not every single one. I still have to make my way for a lot of their older songs and ever uh, previous album releases. But I've enjoyed what I've heard quite a bit. I know there are plenty of others out there that would share a similar story. I know people, in fact, that are very familiarized with Amberlynn from, you know, years ago. I don't know how many of them are aware of this new EP released. <laughs> Again, like I said, it was a shocker to me. Maybe they already knew, and, you know, I'm just the one that's completely late on the party. And perhaps there are some of you who are approaching that video. Again, like I said, there's probably plenty of you who are longtime Amberlynn fans. But there might as well, you know, be some of you who perhaps are approaching a new group, maybe in what I've covered on this channel. You know, as I said, you know, many times, it's been a recent uh, materialization of a long-standing ambition I've had to bring music onto this channel in a more dominant role, in accordance to other artistic ventures of what I cover more regularly and what I founded this channel on. So maybe some of you are familiarized with another band, but then this video pops up with Amber Lynn. You're like, I've never heard this group. Let's try them out. Or maybe some of you, you know, or just maybe you've heard the name Amber Lynn before, but you've never entertained them. Maybe you're choosing to do so with me on a first time listen, because I have not heard the track about at Ready to Listen To, which has been the story for every single track I've consulted on this channel with Silverline. It's all a fresh consultation between you and I. So we'll get to share on a first listen if that happens to be uh, your story and the angle you're coming at or approaching this video from. And I can't wait to experience that with you, as we do many times, you know, for many different artists and songs. You know, with Amber Lynn, long-standing treat for me. Again, nostalgic and a lot of fun. Silverline has been that in its entirety, from Two Graves to Nothing Lost, Body Language, and Asking. Now we have Circles to wrap things up. And this one has an official music video as well, very similar to uh, Two Graves. So I'm excited to see where this goes. Let's go ahead and entertain the song together, as well as you know, the video that came alongside it uh, simultaneously. And perhaps the message, if you want to read along with the narrative of the piece, maybe you're not familiarized with how I normally format my music coverage on this channel. I provide the lyrics for you so you don't have to necessarily go out of your way to pull up another tab or whatever. That's an added convenience, and those will be available in the bottom of the feed of what you're seeing on the video, and they'll track along with the song as we navigate our way through it. We'll also have a discussion towards the end, I'm sure, on the uh, at least one interpretation of a song, very similar to what I did for asking what I should have done, admittedly, for the previous tracks as well. I did find interpretation to give us a bit of a baseline of what the song's narrative is speaking to. And again, we'll touch on that uh, after, but maybe you'll be able to extract a different message, right? Music can be very subjective in terms of its interpretation and application among listeners. It's been that way for me, perhaps, where I've or found a storyline, a song that perhaps deters from the uh, established interpretation of the artist. Maybe that'll be the story with Circles. Let's see which path in terms of interpretation this song uh, goes. It's a slower entrance, I like that. That's consistent with some of the other songs as well. Previously, I've not heard Silverline yet. Asking was like this. I'm assuming a bit of like an abstract storyline here. We'll see. Some of their videos take a more contemplative edge, to be fair.
And that's an interesting effect. <laughs> it's an interesting trait. Especially on a younger voice. Maybe it's not just a sound aesthetic, I'm thinking perhaps to give it universal age appeal, maybe? Because it is a theme that could be applicable to anybody. It's quite common in terms of human experiences. I like the fantasy interpretation from the lyrics, even though it, there is an explicit Christian uh, uh, interpretation you can't take. It's not just necessarily a poetic, uh, fictional vision. But it's uniquely voiced, in my opinion. Good overlap. It's nice to get some thicker riffs in there. Even though this definitely has much more of a pop sound, it's it's fine though. It's a nice summary, I think, on the album. Good pacing. Nice drops there in terms of the intensity. Good pacing. Nice layered vocal tonality. I think I'm understanding now maybe the integration of the childlike voice. It makes more sense in terms of the videos. I, I'm, I think I get it. It might not just be universal audience appeal. I think there's something else. an extensive departing as well in terms of the music it just cuts off that's interesting you know there's a couple of groups i can think of lately that have covered their offerings and they've taken on a more i'm gonna call this a bit more of it i i i think it would honestly not be the wisest to just reduce this to like a rock pop song and I understand maybe the indulgence of that idea, and that's what i express kind of like you know in the terms of what i've heard it takes on more of a pop aesthetic this comes across as much more alternative indie for me. You know, I think, for example, some recent other bands offerings, let's say, for example, Paramore. That one surprised me, where it's like, okay, you know, I remember back to, like, Misery Business and Monster. I think it was called Monster. Yeah. And those songs were, or Crush, Crush, Crush. You know, I, I, there was an established idea, and I hadn't entertained Paramore in a number of years, but I used to be a, a, quite a big fan. And I'm not saying, like, I used to be like, oh, you know, I, I parted ways with them or anything. No, it was just, you know, time went by and Paramore didn't really offer anything in the way of new and there were other artists that came out you know in terms of many bands I've consulted so perhaps you know, you have, you still carry the same tracks on your phone but you lose 
after a while they just kind of get buried in you know your giant enormous playlist that you're just steadily running out of phone space <laughs> at least i am but when paramore came back on i'm like oh wait they're making music again similar to amberlin nostalgic ride you know this is why and the news in very different vibes of their music but i'm like you know it takes on a much more individualized artistic flair I get a strong pull with this song, Circles, not just in the visual storytelling of the piece, and similar to Two Graves in a way, though void of the band uh, performance, as there was at least some semblance of that on that uh, particular video release. This is a piece I find is quite an interesting craft in its vision, as well as its um, interpretation of the piece, in the tone of the music quite specifically. Not just in that pop vibe. Again, like I said, very alternative indie. I really get a strong presence of that. But I like the interpretation. It takes on much more of like a fantasy uh, appearance, even though it is expressing a theme that I think is generally resonant. You don't necessarily have to be, you know, like I said, Amber Lynn, their foundational Christian rock band. That's how I came across them. Longtime presence in that particular scene, although I think they have broad appeal. So the song as well, you might read from a, a Christian lens, perhaps as I do, in a foundational mindset. And you see a song that's searching, that's, well, yeah, it's searching. It's searching, I guess, in part of the narrative structure for revelation amid somebody's life. You know, whatever perhaps the motive is, right? What you could just be striving for peace, or as maybe the interpretation I'm reading off Song Tell says, or improved actualization or there, there's just a period of reflection that you're sitting in amidst your life or a particular moment or a season whatever it might be that i think this song establishes very well in its fantasy spirit and it takes that reflective vision and gives it this poetic sense that blends explicitly to the christian scene you know i think again like there's this land of enchantment heaven perhaps the greater spirit and i greater spirit being god but you, you can read about maybe like foundational you know fantasy folklore you can think back perhaps in your childhood maybe some recent offerings in the fantasy literary genre or, uh, in poetry and there's a there's a thread i i find it quite unique in its presence particularly again in materializing the idea of a reflective journey and it occurred to me watching the video like i said you know it's unique i think to layer in an element where you've got a vocalization from i'm assuming i don't think maybe it's just like an electronic effect i think they probably brought in maybe a kid or two to sing that those lines in an explicit kid-like vision my first instinct was to say okay this is to give it broad appeal because again we're talking about human reflection here and perhaps, again, that search for improvement, actualization, or just peace amid you getting, you know, the turbulence of life, that applies to everybody. Various contexts, universal foundation for any of us. So anybody could approach the song and, you know, hear their own voice spoken of in it. But speaking of reflection, the video later identifies, and by the way, I like the isolation of the video as well. I really do, especially as somebody who, again, you know, I think in my own personal experiences of reflection, and I've said, you know, very recently over the last couple of years, I've been sort of in a state of that. I, I call it different names, perhaps. Again, I like to be more individualized in the way that I approach my personal experiences and how I articulate them and just how I, you know, present my thoughts or emotions or work on this channel. I, I like to take much more of an individualized focus however I can. I do prioritize originality. So I call you know, reflection, or whatever I call reflection, I see more as like a self-deconstruction, reconstruction phase for a variety of means. But you know, it's a path I needed to take specifically. So I resonate with the video in specific focus of this uh, character of the woman walking around in a state again where you know, they're by themselves, right? They're, they're completely alone in a... Uh, isolation of the world around them and i think of my own therapy experiences or just experiences of reflectiveness and i'm like you know it's the same journey i've taken i had to in a sense part ways of humanity over the last couple of years and like you know i just needed to take some time for myself you know in terms of whether it be just processing life or trying to find peace or actualization i think watching this video it's a great embodiment in a sense of the last two three four years you know, and it's still a journey I'm on in terms of self-deconstruction slash reconstruction. And like I said, it's a path I've needed to take. It, it needed to, and I can't stress that word enough. If there was no choice for me, 
I just had to take that time away. And, you know, I'm slowly reintegrating. I'm not like, you know, saying I'm going to be a hermit and cut myself off forever. I just needed some time to, you know, be... unanalogous to the present world. Disconnected for the better. So I look at this song, and again, I see the isolation that truly resonates with me. But speaking back again, I was saying on the child. At first, again, I just assumed it was audience appeal, but now that I read it, I'm like, okay, thinking back on reflectiveness, where does reflectiveness take us to our past? There's a couple of videos maybe I can think of from other artists who have taken on similar types of storylines. Maybe some are escaping me. I can say at least one example off the top of my head. Maybe I'll cite another, you know, that I can think of in terms of when I go to edit this in post. You know, because not everything comes to my head immediately. But I think to other bands that have perhaps, or perhaps played around with reflectiveness through a the image of a child. Let's say, for example, Icon for Hire. Some of you know much. I love them. Curse or Cure. I uh, really wish I'd covered... Uh, what was the name of that album? Amorphous? I so wish I'd been covering music on this channel when that album released, because I'm like, that would that track would have been a wonderful one to spotlight in terms of the first listen. But, you know, Ariel, their lead singer, she pictured sort of, it was a different storyline of their pieces. Um, but and there's a bit of a similar vibe in terms of like the self-therapeutic side that this album, or particularly the song, is sort of uh, playing with. But I think back with that song, and she also expressed the same type of image. So watching this, I'm like, okay, now I see, again, there's an extension with, the, uh, there's, a pre there's a necessity for the childlike vision, because again, speaking to the reflectiveness, perhaps in this individual, but the video uh, pictures in somebody looking back on their life into a different, you know, moment or phase and reminiscing, you know, for whatever reason it might be. I find it quite unique integration. Again, like I said, it's not an effect choice. I hear that often. Sometimes, yes. I'm thinking again in recent offerings. There are pictures, uh, songs I've heard in my past that are, you know, like years back that have employed the same element for whatever reason. Some good ones, too. Um, I don't know. Like, immediately what comes to mind, I'm thinking Casting Crown's Slow Fade. And there's a necessity for the involvement there, too. I love that song. It's my favorites from them. It's always been. I see the integration more explicitly in why it was included. I think it was a wonderful element to bring in. It beautifully materializes the theme and I think, again, the overall compulsion of emotion for anybody. It's a universal song and I think in application it not only resonates with me, but perhaps if I were to go on faith here, for many of you that are consulting this track in the first listen, you experience the same type of idea. If you were looking for that, again, if you were familiarized with the message going in, or maybe now you see it reflecting on it, reflecting, <laughs> you're reflecting on this song and it's now coming to mind in terms of the principles of reflection. I think it's something that would be easy, for, it would be an easy theme for universal impact. I would imagine, whether that be just an individual or specifically in age. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below on the piece, whether you're perhaps a longtime Amberlynn fan, if you wish to disclose your perspective down below, or if you're a fresh time, uh, first time listener in this piece, perhaps, or maybe you're just in your early days phase with them. Maybe you've taken the journey with me through Silverline. Again, like I said, I've consulted all the works on this channel thus far from that particular EP, and Circles were summing up the journey here. Maybe, you know, again, like I said, you're looking at this with fresh eyes entirely, whether it be the song or the band. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below on the piece, as well as, you know, your overall angle, if you wish, again, like I said, to provide that down below. Circles, I think, again, like I said, Indie Flare, very original piece, like a lot of these other ones in Silverline that are, for me, not... Some of them do evoke a familiar Amberlynn tonality, but it feels very nostalgic, not just, you know, in listening to Amberlynn myself, but, especially new music from them, but... In the vibe I get, this is much more, I would say, an art-minded song, and I think it's very interesting in terms of an album closure. It's paced pretty well. I think in terms of a song's placement, it's a nice outro out, where Two Graves is the rougher start and origin. It, it sort of flows down. I, I like that. It's like a steady, a steady stream of a transition over the entire release. I like the mapping of it. I think it's a great EP overall, and I do feel that uh, circles both in theme and in, in presence of a song and as well with the video it was a wonderful piece to cap you know the out of the ep with and maybe going forward you know amberlin will do more stuff along this artsy individualized line i don't know it kind of again evokes a throwback or specific uh presence again you know as i've said previously 
I didn't know, you know, for a little while that the new official EP was released, and let alone that two grave single. So maybe I'll try to keep a better eye than I did this time, and I'll try to be more up to date. If there are any new offerings uh, added on at some point, Amberlynn's got an open door here as far as I'm concerned. Again, like I've said, familiarized talent to me. I've loved them for many years. And Silverline, along with Circles uh, specifically, is no exception. And I'm sure going forward, if there is anything new from Amberlynn in terms of musical provisions, that'll be the same story that ca or carries through. Thank you so much for watching this video. Before you bounce, feel free to drop a like and comment, subscribe to this channel with a ding on the bell, and share this video with your friends. And consider checking out the description here. There you'll find links to my other channels, as well as addresses to my other social media accounts and ways you can help support my work if you feel so inclined. May God bless you, and looking forward to when our paths cross again.